and Buck and Governor DeSantis talks Binomics, Disney, and more. Promised, we have with us now the governor of Florida. He is also running in the Republican president, uh, presidential primary. Governor DeSantis, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, how y'all doing? We're good, sir. We're good. Uh, tell us how you feel this point in the race. Uh, a lot of polls out there, a lot of people asking questions. I know you had to take uh, some of those questions over the weekend over at Fox from Maria Bartiromo. Um, what do you think your campaign's doing right, and what are you looking to do more of? What are you going to change? Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's pretty clear, and not just in the recent weeks. I mean, really, since we won re-election by so much last November, uh, we have been the target uh, of the corporate media. They clearly do not. Not really, bro. They don't want me to be the nominee. Not really. And I think it's because they know that I would beat Biden soundly. Uh, but more importantly than that, they know that I will actually accomplish. Nah, bro. Social media and and, and independent independent journalists and con and, and commentators and analysts was was the people and and just regular re you know political enthusiasts who really got they think on the pulse of the country. They the ones who was pointing that out. The, before that. The media was like, oh, Roger Sanders is such a tough guy. He's such a big threat. Oh, he's going to take over the country by storm. That's what the media was doing. But then you started sucking after your campaign went on. And then it was painfully obvious, obvious that you ain't got the juice. That's what happened. Flish, uh, the big things that we know need to be accomplished in this country, you know, we'll shut down the border. Uh, we'll reverse Biden economics. We'll do all the things that so many Americans want to see done. So that's all part of their narrative. And they're going to continue doing that, you know, you know, no matter what happens. Look, the way we view it is you're competing in individual contests. There's not a national primary. Uh, there's state by state. And so we've worked really hard to develop the type of support uh, on the grassroots level in places like Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, that really can propel a candidate to victory. I think we've uh, already announced 37 Iowa state legislators, including some of the leaders in both the House and Senate. We've got conservative activists, uh, faith leaders, all these important people uh, that can help bring this message to bear. And so a lot of over the summer, we always anticipated uh, would we be doing a lot of that laborious work that isn't as uh, news. I have him not really been paying attention because he's not saying anything. Yeah, he does look like a giant old kid, doesn't he? He looks like he looks like a little kid who put on makeup to look like a big boy. Like he's a child, but he wants to go in a bank and, and take money out of his dad's account. Worthy, maybe. But ultimately, that's what leads uh, to, to, I think, a winning campaign. And so uh, we're excited about the progress. Uh, we understand that there's a lot more to do, uh, but we are focusing on how you actually accumulate the delegates. Uh, rather than kind of the national stuff that gets put out there, which, as you know, we don't have a national primary. I know that you even read uh, court opinions. I'm told by your staff for fun, which is a uh, which is a law school nerd thing that uh, that I think you've kept up with. Um, and sometimes I do the same. Uh, and on July 4th, we had, I think, one of the most consequential federal courts. Well, Mick, laborious work for him is talking to people for longer than 35 seconds, maybe 35 and a half seconds, but you ain't going to get to 36 seconds around the Senate. So, you know what I'm saying? That, that That's laborious work to him. Rulings of the uh, of the entire COVID era uh, with the uh, <laughs> Dowdy opinion. Blah, 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 blah. I'm a dirty tramp. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. I'm a tramp. I have a tramp stamp on my booty and it has Donald Trump's face on it. <laughs> yes, indeed. He is a tramp. And about Biden coordination as it pertained to uh, censorship relating to COVID, relating <laughs> to so many different issues. As president, how important is this issue? Because I actually think it's maybe the most important. If we can't say what we actually think and our government's trying to censor us, what did you think of that opinion? What needs to happen to keep the federal government out of censoring the political opinions of anybody, Democrat, Republican, or independent in your mind? Well, the decision was right on target. I mean, as you guys know, the federal government cannot censor speech. It's a First Amendment. That's the core of it. Uh, and so we know that. And so just as they could not do a law to say you can't oppose COVID lockdowns or you can't oppose mass mandates, they can't subcontract out that censorship uh, to private entities. That's still every bit as much a violation of the First Amendment 
uh, if they're doing indirectly what they cannot do directly. So I don't think the court could have come to any other conclusion. Now in Florida, we've actually taken legislative action to prevent state and local government. He's so dry. God, he's so dry. Like, and he's saying like, there's, there's nothing authentic or unique about anything that he does, you know, cause they're, you know, everyone kind of knows more or less what they're going to say when they get on camera, but they still bring some, some pizzazz with it. You know what I'm saying? They still bring some life with it. They may go to the left or to the right, just a little bit off the track because they're human beings and not robots. Employees from colluding with tech companies or any media company uh, for the purpose of censoring speech. And we think that that's an important line in the sand that needs to be drawn. And you have to hold people accountable if they cross that line in the sand. So we will do something similar. You know, maybe we get Congress to do, but I don't even know if you need to do that. Uh, we will make it very clear that as president, uh, when you're working with tech companies to try to stifle dissent, uh, you are abusing your power uh, and you are infringing on the constitutional rights of American citizens and you will be shown the door. You got to start firing these malevolent bureaucrats. You can't just let them continue to take more and more of our freedom. And I agree with you guys. This is a fundamental issue because the left ultimately wants to dominate every institution in this country. And they have dominated a lot of them up to this point. And not in Florida because we fought back, but across what? the country. And they want to impose an orthodoxy. And so back during COVID, if you posted an article in those early days criticizing lockdowns, tech companies would pull it down. We had one of <laughs> our YouTube videos. I had a panel of eminent scientists, people like Dr. Bhattacharya from Stanford, early in COVID saying kids needed to be in school and they should not be forced. To He's going to lose his reelection for governor. And when, 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 it, when it's time for him to run for reelection for governor, he ain't winning again. The, the, his presidential campaign is going to make him unbelievably unpopular. Yeah, he's and, and look at the. I mean, again, the dryness. It's it, like you said, uh, 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 Fadel. Itchy eyes. He's so dry. My skin itching. He's so dry. To mask Google, YouTube took that video down. So there was a concerted effort to use massive amounts of power, both corporate and government, to impose an official narrative on the country. And first of all. That's just not what a free society is all about. But it's also, as you guys know, the official narrative coming out of our elites is almost. Donald Trump was the president when those mandates went out. I don't understand how Republicans always forget this. When these mandates went out, Donald Trump was the head executive of the United States of America, not Joe Biden. Like these people are so ridiculous. It's always wrong and it's almost always destructive to a healthy society. Governor DeSantis, Bidenomics is something that's being talked about by the regime in power right now. President Biden offering up a, a version of what the economy is. Uh, what's your sense of what's going on right now in the U.S. economy? And what would you do if you were president to get things going the way they should be? Before you buy a million dollar view like this, create a faceless YouTube automation channel first. In fact, this channel right here, Tech Zone. You don't have to do any work at all. If you want to be in this condo, if you want to be in this mansion, all you got to do is pay me $500 and everything will just be really simple. You're not going to have to try. You're not going to have to put in work day after day. You're not going to have to build anything. You're not going to have to make any mess. Okay. Yeah. So Bidenomics basically means you pay more for everything. Your standard of living goes down, uh, ultimately to the benefit of places like communist China. But it's important to, to identify kind of where all this goes back to. You know, the root of this the generic was zombie. lockdowns and the Fauciism. And then they did the massive $2 trillion spending plan, borrow spending $2 trillion in March of 2020. You had a massive printing of money by the Federal Reserve. Then December of 2020, another $2.2 trillion. Then March of 2021, Biden did $2 trillion. And they've done more and more and more. You cannot... This dude ain't said a single word, a single word about any issues that actually matter. Not nothing. He ain't talked about wages. He ain't talked about the education system, and, you know, other than, you know, banning books and, you know, persecuting the gays. Other than that, he ain't talking about nothing. So inject 
that much borrowing, printing, and spending into the economy and not have persistent inflation. So they were warned about doing this, and yet they barreled ahead with it anyways. And so this has really been a government-induced uh, economic uh, problem crisis in terms of affordability. And so one of the things you got to do, one, we're going to reverse Bidenomics, which is basically the politicization of the economy. They want things like what? ESG. They want the Green New Deal. They want you what to does have- What does that even mean? The politicization of the economy? What, what does that even mean? To bend a knee portability. And so one of the things you got to do, one, we're going to reverse Bidenomics, which is basically the politicization of the economy. They want things like ESG. They want the Green New Deal. They want you to have to bend a knee to left-wing ideology to be able to participate in the economy. That's not going to work, and it's going to mean less freedom for everybody and a lower standard of living. So we will do that. But we've got to ensure that the Congress is not allowed to spend... The Green New, the Green New Deal isn't even a real plan. It's not even an actual plan. It's just an idea. It's, a, it's basically a set of ideals for the direction we should head in. And like drunken sailors, when they spend at this level... You are just not going to end up having inflation be where it needs to be. Uh, we're now 50 percent more in terms of spending on federal agencies than just 2019 alone. Does anybody out there feel like they're that much better off because the bureaucracy has grown so much and these agencies, failed agencies like CDC and NIH have been stuffed with more borrowed money? No, everybody knows this has been a colossal waste, uh, but it's had huge impact on the economy. We're also gonna open up American domestic energy production. It's good for our national security to be energy independent. It's good for our industrial base to be permitting more pipelines, have more projects underway. It's absolutely good for jobs as well. And it will help reduce inflation because if you look about where uh, energy is factored into this, Biden basically squandered a lot of the strategic petroleum reserve, which artificially kept the price a little lower than it otherwise would have been. Uh, time may be running out on that, and you may see spikes in energy. And if that's the case, inflation will, will go back up again. So I think that that's really, really important. And then you also need to rip out uh, the bureaucratic excess. Yes, part of it is the weaponization and the deep state, but it's also just a massive, massive overreach of these bureaucrats where they want to tell you what kind of car you can drive. They want to tell you what kind of energy you can use with never having stood for election and not accountable to the god he's not saying anything and we all there's only a few minutes left but I, I i wanted to continue to watch this just so we can really absorb what he's like because you know often you see clips of him but like this is just you know we're absorbing just kind of what what he what this man's like and it's, it's easy to not listen to him he's so dry we in a famine right now you know what i'm saying like and he ain't saying nothing. The American people, it's a distortion of constitutional government. It's also terrible for economic growth. Last question for you. We know you're busy uh, making your case all over the country. Front, uh, not front page, I don't think, uh, but a big article in the Wall Street Journal. The headline is Disney World hasn't felt this empty in years. It says July 4th, 10 year low. They're having trouble getting people to show up at Disney World and Disneyland. Uh, the movies, and I know you got young kids, the movies that they've been putting out, the Pixar movies are collapsing. Even the recent Indiana Jones did not do well. Do you think you're working oh, with my best perspective? It that's because the movies aren't good. <laughs> that, that, that's why. That's that's uh, the Indiana Jones. I haven't seen it, but apparently it's really not good, um, which that's not a surprise. And uh, Disney, they put out too many Marvel movies. It's just too much. You feel me? Just more. More, 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 more. Like, nah, y'all need to, y'all need to be a little exclusive. You know what I'm saying? You're just throwing out a bunch of BS. Feels to me like Disney has gone woke, and Bob Iger is now paying the consequences. Do you see it that way? Amazon AI is changing women's lives. I go to sleep and I wake up the next. Well, I'll tell you, as uh, parents of six, five, and three-year-old kids, my wife and I really believe that parents should be able to send their kids to school, let them watch cartoons without having an agenda shoved down their throat. That's why we stood up to Disney with respect to our parents' rights and education bill. Uh, and I think that it is impacting parents' willingness to want to take their kids 
to the Disney stuff. The sad part about it, guys, is when we were having this fight with Disney in 2022, most of the employees in their Orlando area theme parks, they agreed with us. Uh, I yep. won Osceola County for the first time a Republican's done in a generation by 7%, which is where the majority of, of Disney employees live. So this is really a cadre of woke executives in Burbank trying to impose this agenda down um, on the rest of the company. I think it's been catastrophic. My advice would just be, look, what made Disney kind of the all-American company under Walt and, and beyond was a focus on family, uh, a focus on you know traditional pro-American values. They would never have wanted to sexualize children uh, the way Disney has gone down this. So they just have to look in the mirror, understand, first of all, it's wrong. Second of all, people aren't buying this. Man, these people who are so caught up on this are so weird because it's not like that at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, how, as if Disney movies aren't still family oriented. Like, I, I, you know, what? I mean, what? Enchant, Enchanted. What's that? The Coco movie. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, I don't have kids, and I, I'm the youngest, so like, the, I'm kind of fell off with them. But so many. How to Tame a Dragon. I'm thinking of like all these more recent, like you know, Pixar movies that are like, what are you talking about sexualizing children? What do you, what does that even mean? You know what I mean? So it's just like for you to really s see that within all these Disney programs, just, bro, these people are weird, man. These people are weird. And it is ultimately to the detriment of the company. It's in the best interest of Disney shareholders that they get refocused on their previous core mission and get the woke out of there. And it goes beyond when you start talking about kids, because some of the woke in society is kind of annoying. And, you know, sometimes you just kind of roll your eyes. When you start talking about our kids, that's when parents really, really rise up uh, and respond. And I, and I think it's sad that that's the case, but they have knowingly chosen to go down this road. And I can tell you in Florida, uh, you know, we're one of the few places where we've stood up to these woke companies in defense of parents and children. I get criticized by a lot of Republicans for having done that, but I'll tell you, uh, I would do it again, and it was the right thing to do. I, I I get lots and lots of constructive criticism, and I don't listen to any of it. I, I, I'm just in my own world completely, 100%. Listen, Ron DeSantis, if there's anybody who knows a thing or two about not listening to people, it is me. But I listen when it makes sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When people got something to say and it makes sense, I'll probably do it or take it into consideration because I'm not an idiot. You know, my ego isn't that inflated. I, I mean, y'all know I'm, I, I definitely am, I'm definitely into me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not so into myself that I won't listen to something that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like it's, and a lot of that comes really from just being an adult.